Welcome into the Sports Drive, everyone. We're continuing our coverage of all things Sod Poodles. It is opening day. It's finally here. I am here with Sod Poodles broadcaster Stefan Carey. Stefan, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to this offseason. Uh, just a whole lot of family support, right? I mean, you're next to me now. We used to be somebody else, but now <laughs> we're, we're really excited for Chris and his uh, departure to the major leagues with the Oakland Athletics. But no, a whole lot of uh, low-key activity, big, relaxing. It was a, a big, big off-season for the Diamondbacks, obviously trying to gear up for another run at the World Series. But for me, it was pretty much laying by the pool and, and trying to decompress. But now I'm happy to be back, ready to go for opening day tomorrow. Absolutely, and I kind of want to dive right into this opening day roster, this talent coming back. I know a lot of the talent from the championship team that we can expect tomorrow on opening day. Um, tell us a little bit about it. First, let's start off maybe with some in the batter's box. Who can we expect to really just have some breakout years? Yeah, right away, the word that comes to mind is continuity, right? The yeah. team is so similar to that Texas League championship winning team last September. So that's one thing that we're really going to be lucky to get to see from opening day four. There's a lot of log jam at the next level. Manager Tim Bogar says, keep your feet where you're playing and all will work out as it's supposed to. I think names that you're going to recognize are going to be the guys that are going to step up to the plate literally and figuratively. <laughs> Navy Castillo. Uh, AJ Vukovic, Davison De Los Santos, those three are the biggest hitters right now potentially in the Texas League. I think they're poised to have a phenomenal, phenomenal summer here with the Saab Poodles. But one name that, that has flown under the radar a little bit, fall league selection, is of course Caleb Roberts. And maybe the biggest box office ticket right now is Ivan Melendez. Everybody's so excited about the Hispanic Titanic. He has just flown, flown to this, this level of, of notoriety within baseball, minor league and major league, that everybody's excited what he can do here at this offensive friendly ballpark. And then I know you mentioned offensive friendly, especially with the wind here. I t mentioned it to Tony. It's like a hitter's paradise here. But now I want to go to the um, bullpen a little bit, to the mound. I know you, Men Lynn, Luke Albright, a couple names coming back. What can we expect out of the bullpen this season? Yeah, the same thing. I think a lot more stability than last year, right? You have four out of your five starters that have already worn a Sod Poodles uniform that have already pitched at Hodgetown. That's something that is invaluable to our success as a team. Reason being, this is a difficult place to prepare for. If you've never pitched at this ballpark as a pitcher we said it. it's offensive friendly so now that they've gotten that under their belt now that they're used to being able to pitch at a ballpark like this I think we're gonna see a lot more success early we're gonna see guys going deeper into the game instead of four innings which was a problem at the beginning of the season but again Yuman Lin uh, Yilber Diaz two guys that have electrifying stuff Yilber with the heat and Yuman with the off-speed stuff they're gonna be phenomenal and our bullpen same sort of same sort of deal right a lot of production being returned uh, on the back end of the rotation as well as in the bullpen and I know we talked a lot, a lot about the returnees, but are there any new faces, maybe people that really surprised the Diamondbacks organization in spring training that might be in single A right now that we might could potentially see later in the season that you that stood out to you? Well, there are a couple names, obviously, that I think everybody's waiting to hear. Tommy Troy, the first-round selection from last year's draft, shortstop. He will be poised to fill Jordan Lawler's role at some point. They started him in Hillsboro. He's a tremendous talent. I saw him a couple of years ago on the Cape. He played at Stanford, so obviously a high IQ guy. Um, and there are other names as well. Uh, Drew Jones, he's starting in Visalia. He's had a bit of a slow start to his pro career, but again, the son of Andrew Jones, phenomenal defensively. They're trying to get his bat together, but I can't think of a better place for that to start happening than here in Amarillo. There are going to be so many names coming up. The D-backs still have plenty left in the cupboard in terms of prospects. It's going to be a fun season. And I know, speaking of a fun season, I bet just you as a broadcaster, it's a lot of fun to do play-by-play -play broadcast for a team that's reigning champs. That's, that's good. Would you, don't you agree? Yeah, there's definitely a whole lot of bragging rights in our Texas League broadcaster circle, but I, I'm just so excited about this season because in my time here, our teams have always gotten to a, a bit of a slow start, right? They haven't really fully come into the team that they are until the second half of the season. I think it's going to be totally different this year. We're going to have a ton of talent early and maybe towards the middle part of the first half of the season, they're going to hit a different gear and this team will go on a big winning streak. Maybe they'll start the season on a big winning streak, but I think that we are in a perfect place as an organization, organization of the year. So I'm very fired up to be back. I'm very fired up to get to see you again, get to see KJ again, everybody at, uh, at News Channel 10. And this, this is going to be a whole lot of fun tomorrow night. And I kind of want to dive one question into your job. If people at home kind of don't know the prep that you do, tell us a little bit about game day prep your notes interviews everything you have to do to gear up for a game yeah typically I keep things pretty low-key for the players I try to lock in on somebody that had a good performance the night before I'm planning on talking to Tim Bogar tomorrow maybe today if there's a little bit of time uh, obviously I'm trying to support my dad as well it's uh, Cardinals opening day in st. Louis so I would love to get back there and see a little bit of that uh, my whole family is there right now but uh, I mean it's wake up go to the gym at Verdure where you are familiar with yeah. going um, 
and killing the stairmaster. By the way, that was uh, that's that's, that's your favorite thing on the planet. It is, it is. Uh, but no, uh, you go there and then have about an hour long prep where you just dive into the players, dive into you know past history between these two teams. It's a rich history between San Antonio and uh, Amarillo. They met in the first round of the playoffs last year. Then go into player bios. Right now at the beginning of the season, it's important to uh, to list who the prospects are, who the prospects aren't, and who the the guys are that might fly under the radar. Statistically, you don't have a whole lot to work with except for their spring stats and then their previous stats from last year. But what's so good about this season is you kind of take your foot off the gas pedal on the prep because you know the players yeah. as well as we have gotten to see them. So uh, I'm, I'm really, really excited. It's different not having my brother there to, to kind of, you know, help carry the load. But I think that, that getting to shoulder this this season is going to be a whole lot of fun. And speaking of that, I kind of want to ask a few questions about your family. Obviously, you mentioned Chris and your dad. So tell us a little bit how Chris is loving Oakland. And then your dad, I know his la first year last year with St. Louis. How is he liking that program? Oh, man, he's loving it. I mean, both of them are over the moon. And I couldn't be more ecstatic for them. My brother being 24 years old and getting a TV job in baseball is nothing short of incredible. You know, we both interviewed for Oakland. We both finished in the top five. Uh, and that was a hard pill to swallow at the beginning. But... I realized that my brother started this journey for me and he's so deserving of this opportunity. I know there are a lot of people that are going to question it because of his last name and his talent, but there has been nobody more supportive of him than the Oakland Athletics and NBC Sports Bay Area. They've been phenomenal to our entire family. And and on uh, on that same note, my dad in St. Louis with Valley Sports Midwest, you know, I got to spend some time with their executive producers, got to go spend some time with the St. Louis Cardinals people at the winter meetings. They couldn't be nicer. It's a totally different and refreshing uh, environment for my family and both of them are over the moon excited. And I think they're going to be bigger Saudi fans than just about anybody on the planet. That's awesome to hear. We love to hear that. Well, last question for you, Stefan. The Saud Poodles open up against a team they're familiar with, the San Antonio Missions. Score prediction for tomorrow's opening day. Wow. I mean, this is going to be a clash this weekend. These are two of the best teams top to bottom in the Texas League. You look at San Antonio bringing back Jacob Marcy, who was one of the best players in the Arizona Fall League. Nathan Martorella, who I have a ton of experience with from a few years ago on the Cape League. And Robbie Snelling, their organizational pitcher of the year. This is going to be a dogfight. But I imagine the wind's going to be blowing out. They're going to be high-scoring games. I'm thinking 12 to 10 Saudis okay. tomorrow. Uh, and with the energy of the crowd, it might be even higher than that. So everybody needs to come out and support the team. I'm excited to see everybody and ready for the season to get going. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Stefan. We're looking forward to a great opening night and a great season ahead. And we'll be right back on the Sports Drive.